Podcasting. Good morning, Mega Podlings. It's Crazy Joe, and I'm here to do an unboxing. I'm not sure what's in this box. I'm going to go on... Actually, based on the return address, I really don't know what's in this box. I, you know, I have suspicions as to whom this box is from, but there's nothing on the return address uh, to really give me a clue. But here's the thing. This is how UPS delivered the box. Look at this. It is torn. It is taped. The bottom. This box is just... Um, I don't want to... I don't want to show my address, but, but the side where my address is listed is even more beat up than this. Uh, it's wet in parts. Look at that box. Uh, <laughs> this is horrible. It's got the, the, the hole here. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. Uh, what happened to this box? What did UPS do to this box? I don't know. Let's open it up. But this box has seen better days. Okay, my suspicions are correct. This is from Mill Creek. And I have received many things from Mill Creek over the years. And they usually don't arrive like this. So I don't think this is the fault of Mill Creek. Something happened to this box while it was with, um, with UPS. And UPS really did a disgraceful uh, job with this box. I don't know what they did. But, oh my God, look, and you know, some of these, the shrink wrap is torn off. Uh, of course, of course the shrink wrap, I mean, the box went through hell and back. How could it not be? That is not the fault of, of uh, Mill Creek. Let us not blame Mill Creek for that. That is totally uh, UPS's doing. But let's look and see what Mill Creek sent me. And I am seeing, I think Christine, my beautiful wife, is going to be very excited by this shipment because it is mostly Christmas movies. I'm looking at it and we have Christmas movies here. And uh, that should excite Joe and Marie too. I know Joe and Marie uh, over the you know, Marti Martinez Joe 74 channel. If you're not subscribed to Martinez Joe 74, I know they love their Christmas movies. And these are, it looks like Made for TV Christmas movies. I, I don't know who these were made for, but you know, those um, Hallmark Lifetime Christmas movies are very, very popular now. And this looks like Christmas movies in that style. These these are not Hallmark movies. I don't know that these are Lifetime movies. I don't know where these movies originated, but they're definitely movies in that style. If you're a fan of the Hallmark and Lifetime style Christmas movies. These look like they'll be up your alley. So the first one we got is, and look, you can see, look, look at this. The shrink wrap is hanging off. What happened to that box? Anyway, Christmas in the Smokies is our first one. And basically every one of these is titled Christmas in something. Christmas in, Christmas in. This is Christmas in the Smokies. And I'm looking at the cast here and it's got uh, two people I know in it. Two people I know were in Christmas in the Smokies. Sarah Lancaster and Jill Wagner are the only two names I know. No, Sarah Lancaster played Chuck Bartowski's sister on the TV show Chuck. And, uh, Jill Wagner was the female lead on Blade the Series, the, um, uh, the uh, Spike TV series based on the Blade movies. So those are the only two names I know. Uh, it's also got Barry Corbin, Alan Powell, Greg Allen Williams, Rebecca Noon. Don't know who any of them are. But there you go. Christmas in uh, the Smokies. Sarah Lancaster from Chuck and Barry Corbin from Northern Exposure. I never watched Northern Exposure. Lead an all-star cast in this modern Christmas classic set in the picturesque Smoky Mountains. This heartwarming movie tells the story of the family's journey to save their historic berry farm against all odds during a fateful holiday season. 
there you go. Next we have, remember I said these are all like Christmas in, Christmas in. This is Christmas in the Wilds. Christmas in the Smokies. Now we're at Christmas in the Wilds. Who's in this one? This one's got Catherine Lieb, Victor, Victor Zanuck, Melanie Shankar, Kate Vernon. Oh, Kate Vernon and Laura Vandervoot. I know who Kate Vernon and Landa, Laura Vandervoot are. Laura Vandervoot was Supergirl on the Smallville TV series. And Kate Vernon was on ba um, Battlestar Galactica. She was um, Colonel Ty's wife, Ellen, Ellen Ty. So those are the two names I know there. Uh, Christmas in the Wild, separated by a fierce blizzard. New couple Buck and Jessica take on uncharted wilderness in hopes of reuniting for their first Christmas together. But as treacherous conditions turn their adventure into a battle survival, it reminds them how far they're willing to go for love. So there you go. There you go. All right, next. Oh, man, this one really, uh, the shrink wrap's hanging off of. Okay, there's, there's only one name I know in this one. But it's someone from a Christmas classic. Someone from a Christmas film that is beloved. Uh, we've got Christmas on the Coast. Look at this. Look at the shrink wrap on this one. That one, it's it's barely shrink wrapped. <laughs> oh my God, UPS. What did you do? Now it's... It, let's take this off. It's hanging off anyway. Christmas on the Coast. And this one's got people I never heard of. Julie Ann Emerson. Burgess Jenkins. Clarence Clifford Jr. and Bonnie Bedelia. Bonnie Bedelia, who played Holly in the Christmas classic Die Hard, which I've got sitting right here. Ugh, got my Nakatomi Plaza Die Hard collection right here. So there you go. Bonnie Bedelia from Christmas classic Die Hard. Uh, so that's, that's a, whoa. And I hit the wine glasses. Don't worry, they didn't break. That's the one person I've heard of in this one. Christmas on the Coast. And look at, my God, look how wrinkled that, this, this, of all the DVDs, this is the one that took the biggest beating in that box, apparently. It's got wrinkles, wrinkles on it. It's, man. This one uh, is about New York novelist Drew Cassidine, famous for romance stories, is desperate after a string of flops with her publisher about to drop her, she has just weeks to turn out a bestseller. To spark her creativity, Drew retreats to her childhood home for the holidays as the coastal town prepares for Christmas. Drew struggles to write while a flood of emotions comes over her when handsome local widower Brian Flynn enters her life. Raw fiction turns into real romance on the southern shore. With an unexpected twist no one saw coming. There you go. Christmas on the Coast. We got two more of these. This one also is the shrink wrap is hanging off of. Oh my god. UPS, what did you do? Kimberly Sue Murray. Don't know who that is. Stephen Hutzler and Tricia Strauss. This one's got all unknowns to me. I don't know any of these actors. Christmas in the Rockies. Like I told you, every one of these, Christmas in somewhere. Christmas in, Christmas in. Uh, Kate is already, oh my God, look at this. The case is broken on this one. It's actually, the plastic is broken. Kate is ready to leave her small town for her career-changing opportunity in New York. But an accident involving her dad forces Kate to turn down the job and help with the family business she soon discovers the company is at risk of going under and winning the prize money from the holiday lumberjack competition may be her only hope to save it when romance sparks with fellow competitor harrison and new york comes calling again kate must choose between the contest her heart or her dream job oh boy um there you go and apparently this uh, does, uh, Trisha Strauss is apparently a WWE superstar, according to the back of this. So, so apparently Trisha Strauss is a wrestler. I did not know that. Okay, so there you go. Christmas in the Rockies. And we got one more. 
These are the ones we already had. Christmas in the Smokies, Christmas in the Wilds, Christmas on the Cokes, Christmas on the Rockies. And our last one is... Oh, this one doesn't even have shrink wrap. This one came completely unshrink wrapped. Jeez. Christmas in the Pines. Christmas in the Pines, starring Jillian Murray, Dean Geyer, Grant Goodeve, and Lee Allen Baker. I don't know who they are. No familiar names there to me. Just as Ariel Colt is about to fulfill her Christmas dream, buying an idyllic cottage for her family, she discovers that the mysterious seller accepted two identical offers. Her competition, a handsome architect named Mark, has no intention of letting the cottage go. And the only resolution for them is to hunker down and battle it out with the first person to leave forfeiting the home. Well, that sounds believable. As they transition from strangers to roommates in mere moments, Ariel and Mark discover the perfect holiday getaway may not only be the only thing that has stolen their hearts. Hmm. There you go. Christmas in the Pines, Christmas in the Rockies, Christmas on the Coast, Christmas in the Wilds, and Christmas in the Smokies. And all of these are going to be available on this date from our friends at Mill Creek. But that isn't all. I got one more uh, item for you here, and that is Josie and the Pussycats. Yes, Josie and the Pussycats, the movie version of Josie and the Pussycats from, I believe it was 01, maybe 02. Was it 01? 01. Damn, I'm good. This was the uh, movie adaptation of the comic book by Archie Comics and the cartoon series by Hanna-Barbera. It starred Rachel Lee Cook as Josie, Tara Reed as Melody, and... Rosario Dawson as Val. And the funny thing is, I remember when this movie came out, I, I never heard of Val or, um, I never heard of Rosario Dawson. I'm like, well, I know who the other two are. It's the girl from She's All That and Tara Reed from, from uh, American Pie. I know who they are. Who the heck is Rosario Dawson? Now I would argue Rosario Dawson, years later, is the most famous of the three. She's the star of the new Ahsoka series for, for the Star Wars Ahsoka series. Obviously, she has done things like the Daredevil TV show and the Jessica uh, Jessica Jones on, on Netflix. And she's been in so many movies, Clerks 2 and Men in Black 2. Yeah. So there you go, Rosario Dawson, quite a star now, and at the time, I think she was the biggest unknown of the three of these guys. I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. This movie is from, um, oh God, I got my old man brain, I can't remember, Deborah Kaplan and Harry Elephant. Deborah Kaplan and Harry Elephant, the directors of can't hardly wait if you've ever seen the movie can't hardly wait it's a great teen comedy it feels like one of the great 1980s teen comedies except it wasn't made in the 80s it was made in the 90s and this was their follow-up to can't hardly wait and it's a really smart comedy uh that kind of skewers the music industry at the time and how um, how these bands come out and market to people, and th there's a whole subplot in there about uh, subliminal advertising and the messages they put into songs and how the music industry uh, gets rid of artists that uh, aren't going along with the program. And it's a really, really smart comedy, and I don't think that the audience that went to see this movie really was, at the time, was expecting what it was. I think it was being billed as kind of a dumb teen comedy when it was actually something a little smarter than that. So as a result, the older audience didn't go see it because they thought it was just a dumb teen comedy. And the teens that went to see it didn't like it because it really was not what it was being advertised as. It was something a little higher. So therefore, based on the advertising, it failed, where it's really a very smart movie. And over the years, I've heard people talk highly of Josie and the Pussycats, so I think this movie eventually did find its audience. 
but uh, it was probably too late. But now it is available on Blu-ray. Now you can pick it up, and uh, Mill Creek has made this available. I'm very excited to revisit this. I'm very excited to revisit this with my uh, wife and daughter who have never seen it. And uh, my daughter was very enamored with the Josie and the Pussycats cartoon series when she was younger. So I think I'm talking about my teenage daughter, not my not my six year old. Uh, my six year old probably wouldn't appreciate this because, like I said, it does uh, it is a little more uh, adult in its humor. And by, by adult, I'm not talking like it's like you know, not like sex comedy, but you know, more. A little more mature than she would appreciate. So there you go. Josie and the Pussycats as well. I want to thank our friends at Mill Creek for sending these Christmas movies that my wife is going to totally geek out when she sees these. Wait, wait, till, wait till Christine sees these. She's going to be very excited. And Josie and the Pussycats, a film I can't wait to check out again. So there you go. Please support physical media. Go out and pick these up. And uh, hopefully they get to you in better shape than they get to me. Again, don't blame Mill Creek. Blame UPS. Mill Creek is a great company. And they have sent me many, many, many packages over the years. And they've never arrived like this before. I don't know what happened in transit, but I promise you it wasn't Mill Creek's fault. All right, everybody. Until next time, keep wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. With the plastic feet. Wearing those pajamas, tell everyone you need. Keep wearing those pajamas with the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas, don't open it to trap. Oh, it's a trap. Some people call them bitches, some people call them jammies. They can come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas And now we're having fun Keep wearing those pajamas And now the song is done